channel. This week's video I thought I would take you along for a little weekend vlog. So if you've not seen any of my other videos, my name is Katie, uh, I'm a minimalist um, and I've been one for about uh, three and a half years. Um, I live in a place called the Fenlands which is just outside of Peterborough and videos on this channel are all about living a minimalist lifestyle, uh, eco-friendly lifestyle and a budget conscious lifestyle. So if that sounds interesting to you, I'd love for you to join me, um, especially on this lovely uh, autumnal day that we're having um, and to uh, hit the like button and subscribe. So my to-do list is um, quite long but pretty simple um, and it's not just me um, that this to-do list is for, it's also for my boyfriend Scott, so we do things together. So we've got simple things like a uh, dog walk, um, hoovering, mopping, changing our bedding, um, emptying bins, washing clothes, but we have some exciting things on here so we are actually going on holiday next week which i am so excited for so i thought i'd bring you along um and show you sort of a bit of a pack like a minimalist um, and then we also have some garden bits that we need to do today uh, this weekend and then we need to go out and pick up our travel money and buy some more dog food so I'm currently sitting in our barbecue area. I sit out here uh, all year round really to have breakfast and just take a quiet moment um, listening to the birds and having a nice coffee, especially on a lovely day like today. I mean, there's not really a cloud in the sky, so it's absolutely lovely. Um, and I will also um, take you round doing what I do every single morning. Uh, apart from if it's absolutely chucking it down and I go around and I check um, and just look at all of my my plants so I'm a really passionate gardener so I thought I would take you on a little garden tour to start with so let's go okay so this is the first thing that I saw this morning uh, and it's also going to be my first job is to try and sort out this mess this damage from the wind last night so this is our grapevine that goes all over our barbecue area and in the summer like it's absolutely just incredible it gives that um this structure so much character and it really makes you feel like you're on holiday so it's really lovely but then i've got two roses here um this rose um has a flower uh, flower stem if you can see here so this is where the um flowers were before and you cut it back and then it will sprout new growth so we've got one um stem coming all the way up here We've got two more here, and this one goes all the way up, all the way through this grapevine, and all the way up here. Look how tall it is. And that's just from one year's growth. And the same is with this one. So this is um, a shrub rose uh, called Golden Celebration. And then this is a David Austin rambling rose, um, and it's called Malvern Hills. And I can explain more about... Um, why I chose this variety in particular, um, but at the moment it needs a bit of a rescue mission from the grape that's fallen down. So I have my pots here. So I have a, um, this is a um, daisy, um, obviously gone over and lavender that's gone over. And then this is my little fernery. So these are my um, prized ferns. So I have um, three different ferns. I have a, a small one here, uh, a larger one here, and a larger one here, which are really different in texture. So this is very like Jurassic Parky, um, and this has um, got a lot thicker leaves. Um, ferns actually um, reproduce by creating spores on the back of their leaves. So that's not a disease, that's actually seeds. And they're all over the, the back of the leaves and they're, you know, really interesting actually. Um, but ferns are fantastic for spaces that don't get a lot of sunlight and are in quite poor soil. So, you know, this space here, you know, that's where the sun is now. You can, so you can see it's not gonna get much sunlight at all. So if you have a really shady spot, um, that is 
got really poor soil so obviously this is next to the wall so there's concrete under there for the base so it's not got much soil depth but these ferns have grown humongous in just one year so if you have a shady spot i would put a fern but it can they can be a bit you know green's nice but you need that splash of color so the plant i'd recommend would be something like this this is called a hookara um, i will put how you spell that on screen and this one is called forever purple and as you can tell it is forever purple and then i have a tiny little one here that i only planted this year um believe it or not this um these ferns and that this lovely purple hookara oh it matches my jumper <laughs> that they were as big as that last year and they've grown this much in one year um but this one's got a really nice name and it's called little cutie so hookara little cutie and having that splash of purple just really adds interest um so it's just really nice clash of colors um and i love it so this border is my wildflower border. We've got cornflowers and cosmos. Um, and cosmos are doing really well this time of year. You need a plant that's gonna give you repeat flowers from August all the way till, well, it's now October. Um, cosmos is the best plant. It's really easy to grow. Um, you just have to deadhead it, which I can show you how. And um, it's just really lovely. It gives a lot of height. So this is all cosmos here. It gives a lot of height to the border as well. This border was a bit of an experiment. So um, I wanted to put the bed here, but I wasn't quite sure if this gap between the border and this wall, if that was going to be wide enough. So I thought I'll dig the bed and then I will just sow a load of really quick wildflower seeds so the border gets filled and then we can see if the border was full of plants would it feel too narrow that opening and I'm pleased to say it doesn't so yeah that's what I do every single morning even during the week definitely during the weekend just go around look at all my plants all my plant babies see what needs doing and really just spend time in nature I mean you probably will be able to hear how loud the birds are um, which can get a bit too loud sometimes believe it or not but it's so nice to have so much nature in the garden and it's really because we have the wildlife pond which needs a lot of attention but that's for another day <laughs> do dinner tonight we are making homemade pizzas and we use this dough uh, the frozen stuff from Tesco um, I've got some onions going in the background here I do sort of a really a cheats uh, like balsamic onion that's really good a uh, caramelized onion that goes on top and then we also put rocket goat cheese and parma ham so Caramelised onions, goat's cheese, rocket and parma ham. And it is the best homemade pizza. So I'll take you through what we do. So the first thing I do is cut the onions into um, strips. So I don't dice it, I just cut it into, into strips. And I put it on quite a low um, temperature. So um, our induction hob goes up to 14. It's actually a touch screen. So um, you can put it onto one and then you just drag your finger up um, how you want it. So I put it on low, well, a medium low for now, um, just so they cook down a bit while I do the dough. And I put a little lid on top, so um, they cook away nicely. Um, and then I'm going to um, prepare, we do one pizza at a time. 
Um, it makes two 12 inch pizzas. That does us, me and Scott, we have half each of, because we have like one pizza each, but we have half of each one each time. And the instructions are uh, really clear. Oh yeah, they are. So number one, defrost, which is good. Number two, heat up, uh, bring the dough to room temperature and put your oven on and then dust a work surface. Um, then you stretch and shape the dough, top it and bake it. So our oven has a really, really cool setting. So I put that on. Um, again, this is, it's not a touch, well, this bit is touch screen, but this is a little um, dial. And if I put it onto the best setting, pizza setting. So you just start that, turn the little light off. Um, and then it basically cooks it from the, from the bottom up like a pizza oven at 200. So that is really cool. Okay, so another good thing about um, this brand in particular, the, the Northern Dough Company, um, we get the Italian herb dough because it tastes better, but their little plastic bags that the dough comes in, um, they are um, recyclable at a carry bag collection point. So cardboard box recyclable, plastic packaging also recyclable. Let mummy clean the floor, or are you just gonna sit there and sulk? Sit and sulk, I think. So, hello everybody, it's uh, now the next day, and I'm on a dog walk with the dog. Um, I might sound a bit bunged up at the moment because I developed a cold overnight, <laughs> which is great for when you're about to go on holiday. And uh, yeah, so just taking it nice and slow today with a dog. Uh, the plan for today is to do some cleaning, um, do some packing for going on holiday and uh, watching the NFL. We're big Minnesota Vikings fans. They're playing in London today, which is really exciting. So yeah, nice and easy. So you may be wondering why, as a minimalist, I don't spend every weekend decluttering. And the, the reason is because I actually finished decluttering my home and my life um, at the start of 2022. So now I don't actually spend any time decluttering. Um, maybe like once or twice a year. And I will have one or two uh, videos a year about me doing my sort of annual declutter but if you're looking for decluttering motivation uh, unfortunately I'm not going to be the person to give it to you um, but I will be able to show you what a minimalist does uh, in their weekends when they're not decluttering so yeah nice and chill today the dog is a uh, enjoying his explore and we've literally seen two people all morning and that's how I like it so yeah I'm gonna enjoy this dog walk and I'll see you later 
So it's now a couple of days later and I'm actually packing my bag ready to go on holiday. So I thought I would do a little pack like a minimalist section for this vlog and show you what I'm bringing on our trip to Greece. So this is everything that I'm bringing. We're going to Greece for uh, seven nights, six days. Um, so uh, this is everything. So I'll start with this first section. So these clothes here, these are my um, nice clothes to go to dinner with. So I have a, a grey jumpsuit and a green jumpsuit. They're both different styles. Um, and I am going to be doing a holiday vlog to show you all my outfits um, and what we get up to. And that will be up um, in a few weeks time. So we've got a grey jumpsuit, a green jumpsuit and then four dresses. Um, this jumpsuit here, this grey one, and this blue dress were both from Vinted. This green jumpsuit was from Next. Um, these two dresses, this um, champagne one and this floral one were from Tesco. Um, and this um, spot, like spot one is from uh, River Island. But this was a last minute like clearance one um and that was like four years ago so i don't think this would be in stock anymore um actually then we'll move on to um, outerwear so i have a um scarf which i will be wearing um actually when we're traveling just in case it's well it's pretty cold in the uk at the moment and we're traveling at night and then i have a very light um kind of gray Kind of jacket that also could be like a blazer so it's really light just in case you have like cold shoulders then i have this is my um like daytime casual kind of wardrobe so i have um like a two-piece um set here um for like in in the day i have um a cream kind of it's not it's like a jumpsuit but then it's shorts then i have two sort of daytime dresses um, this was from, I don't actually even know when that this was from, um, this jumpsuit um, type short thing was from Tesco again, this um, spotty dress was from ASOS and this dress was also from Tesco, yes I buy a lot of clothes from Tesco, um, I got two pairs of shorts so again that was this stripy pair was Tesco, this denim pair was do you know what? I can't remember. Probably also either Tesco, maybe even Sainsbury's. And then I have two pairs of long, really like thin material tr trousers um, as well. This these were both, uh, this was from River Island, these um, sort of gold ones. And then the blue ones were from Next. And then two tops. So this new top here was from ASOS. Um, and so was, oh no, this was from Next, this um, other white top. So yeah, in the night I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six outfits. So we're there for six like, days. So that's one per night. And then in the daytime I have, um, this is like one outfit. Oh, well, these are four outfits. Then I have two pairs of shorts, two pairs of trousers and two pairs of tops. So that should be more than enough. I, I might not even wear all of that, but it's good to have some options. And then we come to swimwear. So I have one swimming costume, this green one. I got this from Tesco. It was on clearance, but it's absolutely gorgeous. I have a green um, sort of cover-up dress to go, uh, if we were to go from the pool or the beach straight to the like um, lunch bar area. And then I have two cover-up t-shirts that I don't mind going into the pool with or just putting them on over really wet clothes because I get sunburned very easily because I'm very fair skinned and red headed. Um, and then shoes wise, I've got these heels, which I got from ASOS. These sandals, which I got from Next. And I'm wearing one pair of trainers. And then what I'm gonna be traveling in is these jeans and this jumper um, and um, probably one of those tops just so I'm um, warm in the UK and cool when we get out there. 
and I'll be traveling in white trainers from there. So three pairs of shoes there, and then I've got a jumper and a pair of jeans. But apart from underwear, like socks and underwear, that is all of the clothes that I will be taking with me for a week's holiday. Um, maybe some people might say that's not minimal, mis, minimalist enough. Some people might think, I can't believe you're only going with that many clothes, but this is perfect for me. Um, and other bits I'm sort of taking in my suitcase are obviously my underwear, my makeup, hair stuff. But we also bought this new card game so we can play in the evenings. Uh, there is entertainment and stuff, but that would just be nice for a change. Some country living magazines, all the summer ones, so I can read while still enjoying the last bit of summer. And this um, canvas bag, which I got with my makeup by Terry. Yeah, that's all going in this little red suitcase. So that's it. So I'm going to be Conmari folding all of these clothes back into my suitcase and I'm going to end the vlog there. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all very soon when we're back on from our holidays and I've had my hair cut. Alright, see you guys!